Hello and welcome back. As per suggestion of a viewer, thank you Mark, I'm going to create a series of short video tutorials on blend modes. In each video, I will focus only on one blend mode and share with you how it works and how they can be used. However, be warned that this first video of the series will be a bit longer as I need to share with you some basic terms and setup which I will use in the next upcoming videos. Let's kick off the series with a very uncommon one, the average blend mode. I will use these two gradients to explain and demonstrate how the blend mode works. The top layer is a vertical gradient which starts with black at the bottom and ends with white at the top. This will be the actual layer we will blend into the bottom layer. The bottom, or also known as the base layer, will be a horizontal gradient starting with black from the left and ends in white at the right. Before moving on, let me quickly share what a blend mode is. The blend mode defines how two or more layers are combined to get a single output. The output will be what we see when they are blended. By changing the blend mode, we actually modify the output, or in other words, the resulting view. The blend mode itself is usually a formula, or a function which determines how the pixel values in these two layers react to each other. So let's get back to the average blend mode. The formula to get the end result is as the name of the blend mode indicates the average of both layers, which can be calculated by summing the two pixel values and dividing by two. Let's have a look what the result will be of the blend and the base bottom. As you might have expected, the result contains a large area of gray and we get a dark area at the bottom left and a light area at the top right. Let's analyze and visualize this in a different way. Here I have five lines representing five values. The first one, the blue, is pure black. Green is 70% 5 gray and so on. Ending with the yellow line representing white. If we put them in our result gradient on the right and see how they are affected by the blending with the top layer, and we plot this on the x-axis, we get this interesting visualization, which feels like a curve layer. It gives a nice indication what is happening with these levels of gray. So for the average blend mode, the pure black in blue starts off as pure black, and when it gets blended with the top layer, you notice it gets lighter until it stops at 50% gray. So the blue line in the result gives the course of change of the black color, similar with white, indicated in yellow. It starts off as mid-gray, and as more lighter color is blended with it, it moves to white eventually. I hope this makes sense. I think it gives a good visual feedback in helping us to understand what is happening when a blend mode is applied. Anyway, Enough math and theory, let's have a look when we apply this blend mode to a real image. Here I have a yellowish orange color and I will blend it with the image below. As you see and as you probably expected we get the average of both layers. It contains basically half of the image and the other half is filled with the color I used. This sounds very similar as if we would have lowered the opacity to 50% of one of the layers. And actually it is. The average blend mode is in almost all cases the same as setting the opacity to 50% of the blend layer. Let me also demonstrate that average blend mode is indeed using the formula A plus B divided by 2. I can simulate this by using an apply image filter in Affinity Photo. If you are not familiar with the apply image filter, here is a quick explanation. The apply image filter lets you composite images on the current layer 
and has the option to do calculations for channel blending. With the color layer selected, I can use the Apply Image filter and will use the image as the source layer. Now I can enter an equation per channel for the blending, which will be the average formula on all the channels. As you see, it indeed generates the same result as the average blend mode. In future videos, I will be using the GMIC filter, as this has a very nice feature to enter custom blend formulas. For that, I will switch to GIMP temporarily, as GMIC does not support affinity for Mac. Windows users can use the GMIC filter directly in affinity. For more information about the GMIC filter, see my video on oil painting, where I explained on how to install the GMIC plugin. I will put a link in the description for the ones interested. Here, in GIMP, I have the same two layers, the color layer on top and the image below it. When I open up the GMIC plugin, under layers, blend, there is the possibility to use your own custom formula, which will be perfect for us. I can simply enter the average function with A and B as parameters. A is the base layer, which in our case is the image, and B is the blend layer, which is the color layer. You see the result is exactly what we got earlier. I can also enter the A plus B divided by 2, and of course, we get the same result. I will be using the GMIC filter in future videos to test out the math of blend modes. Let's get back to Affinity. If you remember, I mentioned the average blend mode is in almost all cases the same as changing the opacity to 50% with a normal blend mode. Let's test that. I will change the blend mode back to normal and lower the opacity to 50% of this layer. If I disable the upper layer, which was the average result, you see the result is the same. This is exactly the reason why you might now think why the average blend mode is not so very useful. Why would you need a dedicated blend mode if you can easily change the opacity? To give you an answer, let us compare them side by side. Here, I have the same image twice next to each other and they will be both averaged on a black background. On the left, I have used normal blend mode with 50% opacity and on the right, the image has 100% opacity but with the average blend mode. They look exactly the same. But here comes the catch. I will disable this example group and open up another group with exactly the same setting. This is the normal 50% opacity layer and here is the average version. That is quite a difference. Why? Well, meet blend ranges. I have applied the blend range on both of these images where I have filtered out the highlights. To understand why there is a change, let me enable this group where I have recreated the average blend mode to give you an understanding what is happening. So we have our black background layer, then the image with 50% opacity. And the group itself has the blend range, which means that the blend range is applied after the opacity of 50% is applied with the background. This brings us to a very important key information. The blend mode is always applied first before blend ranges. And continuing on that, we can also conclude that the blend ranges are applied before opacity. This priority of processing is exactly the reason why the normal 50% looks different than the average version. The average mode really calculates the average of each pixel value after which the blend range is applied. With the normal 50%, the blend range is applied. 
where the highlights are replaced by the underlaying layer. And then we decrease the opacity, making the image even darker. This is exactly the reason why you would need an average blend mode. If you have transparency changes in an image and you want to average things out, it is better to use the average blend mode instead of using opacity with 50%. Here is another more realistic example. If you look really closely, and maybe with the compression of YouTube it might be difficult to see, but the image on the right is a tiny bit warmer. Again, on the left I used normal 50% opacity, and on the right the average blend mode. I will not go into detail how these layers have been set up, but to show you the difference I will enable my left studio panel which has the color info points. So, I have these two points on the same place in both images. As you see, there is a slight difference in the color value. Enough theory and comparison. Let's have a quick look how we can use this blend mode. As mentioned, I don't think this blend mode will be used a lot. I personally use it mostly for comparison when experimenting with the blend modes. But here is a more practical usage. Let me add a new layer. Let's suppose we want to make this young lady look older by whitening her hair. I can add the black and white adjustment to the image and adjust it so the hair gets a nice contrast. Now the normal blend mode is very strong. By applying the average blend mode we can dim this effect quite a bit. If I invert the mask of the adjustment with command I and paint with white on the hair the adjustment will only be applied to the hair. So when I change back to normal, you see that this does not look very realistic. But with the average blend mode, it looks not so bad. Again, I can change the opacity to 50%, but when I start changing blend ranges, it would be better to use the average blend mode. Well, this was a long video, as I needed to explain some basics first. Hopefully, the following videos will be shorter, but I still hope you liked it anyway. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss the rest of this series.